Welcome to the channel and in this video I'm going to be showing you how I made these uh, wooden fences for wargaming. I've made eight of them so far, I could do with at least that many again, ideally more. So as I've got the technique down now I thought I'd do a video on how I build them. And what you're going to need is some crafting matchsticks, some tongue depressors, some good glue wood glue ideally, rather than just ordinary cheap nasty craft PVA, you want a decent quality wood glue. Uh, needle and thread, believe it or not. The needle is optional but does make life a lot easier. And some cheap and nasty super glue. Doesn't have to be good value, I mean this is Loctite which is a good brand. Uh, it doesn't have to be a good one for the super glue, the purposes that I'm using it for it can be a cheap and nasty one. I just don't have any cheap and nasty one at the moment. So that's what you're going to need. Right, I'll start with step one. Right, for step one, I'm going to start by gluing together two of the cross sections. And for that, I suggest you are quite selective as to which matchsticks you choose. So try and find the straightest and squarest ones that are least twisted that you can out of the pack. So this one is quite bent and twisted. That will make life bit more difficult for you later on. It's not critical but it will make life easier if you try and find the ones that are quite even. Um, yeah, quite straight and true. Now then, you're going to have to glue them together and that's about a quarter of an inch overlap, so about six mil from there to there. And we're simply going to take two matchsticks and glue them together thusly. So little bit of your good quality wood glue and again this is why you want good quality wood glue because it will be a stronger bond and it will dry quicker and so we'll put a little bit of double glue on there press them together so you got more or less six mil if you want to be really accurate you can measure it but I'm just going to eyeball it because I want my fences to be reasonably rustic and I know from having made um, eight of these already that that is about the amount of overlap that I want I don't know if you can see that very clearly. But yeah, I'm going to do that several times, and obviously I'm going to need to do that at least one, two, three, four times for each fence. Now I'm not going to try and stick them all together in a row first. I'm going to glue them together in pairs, and then when they're glued together in pairs, I'll glue another pair onto this, if that makes sense. Right, so I'll crack on with that, and I'll show you what I mean when I'm done. Okay, about 20 minutes has elapsed since I last hit the record button, or rather hit the stop button, and I've now got enough pairs made up to make eight fences. So, yeah, about 20 minutes to do that eight times, or enough for eight fences. I'm not even going to try and do the maths this late at night, it's been a very long, busy day at work. Right, so now you want to get two of your pairs, and again, we're going to glue them together in the same way, so just a 6mm overlap glue them together and try and get them as straight as you can um, again depending on how straight or how wonky or how rustic you want your fences to be but yeah if you can get the straighter the better basically so again using an old crappy brush with your decent quality wood glue and bobber glue second bit Roughly 6mm overlap, make sure you get it the right way round, so that you want it that way round, not that way round. I don't want them quite that rustic. And just squeeze them together, hold it for a few minutes until the glue dries. Well, a few minutes, not even a few minutes, a few seconds. And that should do it as long as it doesn't stick to my fingers that are already caked in PVA or wood glue. There we go. So yeah, get it, try and twist it slightly to get it half straight. Alright. So yeah, do that now, until you've got enough for a top rail and a bottom rail for each fence. We're now about another 10-15 minutes later, probably 15 minutes later, and all of the cross members have now been glued together. Next thing you want is some cutters, or a craft knife would do, and we're going to cut matchsticks in half, uh, obviously crosswise, not lengthwise. And that's to make the uprights posts, fence posts, and you're going to need five uprights, five posts for each fence. So you simply get a matchstick, I'm going to eyeball it again, and cut it roughly in half. Well, I say roughly, as close as you can get using your eyeballs. 
And as you do this, try to keep the natural ends of the matchstick, at the, um, you know, turn that one round so you've got the natural ends of the matchstick at the same end and you've got the cut edges at the other end, if that makes sense. And again, that makes it a lot easier because you're going to be using these natural flat edges that are a lot flatter and squarer than the edges you've just cut when we actually come to stick the, uh, the fence onto the tongue depressor. So you get a, a better bond by using the flatter, squarer edges. So yeah, as you cut them, keep the, uh, the natural ends of the matchsticks together. And this is a good exercise to be doing while these um, the rails are drying, while the glue on them is drying. So yeah, going to be a fair few of those, let's say five for each one. So five matchsticks will make two fences. I'm making eight. And again, maths, not my strong point this late at night after a very busy day at work. All right, catch you in a little while. 20, it's 20 matchsticks that you need to make five posts for eight fences. And I did work that out in my head. I can do arithmetic and stuff. And to prove that I worked it out in my head and I didn't do it by counting, I actually lost count and I made five extra, well, six, but one of them was a bit naff and it sort of split. So, yeah, throwing that one away. Um, so, yeah, I've now got enough for nine fences, so I did some extra cross rails to go with it to make nine. Right, so you do need to give these cross sections a good amount of time to dry. Uh, ideally overnight. I've had a lot, lot, lot more than that because after I filmed the last bit, I went to my local games club, had a game of 40k, my orcs versus someone else's Eldar. Uh, the orcs won, and they gave the pointy ears a good crumping. The fact that the point years scored a lot more points than the Orcs is beside the point. Points are for, for sissies. Right. Um, yeah, and then I've done a full, uh, good night's sleep, full day at work, and I'm back. So, what we're going to do next is stick one upright, specifically this one, to one of the cross sections. So, we'll put reach around the camera stand, blob of glue on there, and then get one of your posts, one of your fence posts, and we're going to stick it on. And try and get it, again, I can do it by eyeball, but try and get it as perpendicular to the cross section as you can. Put it reasonably close to the top, so this is going to be the top rail. It's easier to do the top rail first and then do the mid rail afterwards. So I'm going to do that for half of the uprights. If you do it for each one, you'll do it wrong. So you want to do it to uh, half of the cross sections rather. So we're just going to put one post on half of the cross sections because obviously the other half are going to be the mid rails. But we'll do that later. All right, I'll come back to you after I've sorted out half the cross sections and stuck an upright post on each one. Okay, so that's half of the cross sections have got one post glued to them. You can see I left the post sticking up by about two mil at the top. You do want a little bit sticking up over the top. You don't want it flush with the top rail. You can see that, okay. The next thing we do is get your other cross rails and then we're going to stick one onto here. Now again, if you can let these dry a little bit first, you do yourself a world of favours. Um, but again, this is where the benefit of using good strong wood glue as opposed to crappy craft PVA comes in handy it dries quicker and it dries stronger so what we'll simply do is again eyeball halfway between that top rail and the ground or the bottom of the upright rail, up rail, and we'll stick it on there so another blob of glue put it onto where the joint is between the two these two rails eyeball where halfway is Stick it on, hold it in place for a few seconds, try and make sure they're as parallel as you can get. Uh, probably go down a little bit there. Yeah, try and make the rails as parallel as you can get them. And just hold it for a few minutes, wait for it to dry, put it down, do the next one. This is not a quick project. It's a really good project for doing around other projects because of the drying times. Um, I find it, I, well, the first time I did it, I found it best to have this going while I was doing other projects. So I can do the next step, do some more of the other projects while it's drying. So it's a good one for that. So in the meantime, in the background, you can have 
your favourite YouTube channels going, you know, a bit of Say Hi Paul, a bit of Wylock's Armoury, a bit of Valrathian, a bit of Moogs uh, painting and watching paint dry, um, dare I say a bit of Clash of the Dice or Sad and Lonely Gamer, yeah, just have something on, keep yourself entertained when, um, while you're actually putting your blobs of glue on, then come back while it's drying, after it's dried. Okay, there we go, I've put an upright on the, each pair. Now I'm going to let those dry because we are talking about really quite small surface area contact points for the glue. Um, so yeah, good strong glue will do the world, world of favours. Um, but yeah, if you let those dry, you'll make life easier for yourself. So while that's drying, I am going to go and build myself a Gloom Spike, Gloom Spike Gits Loom Boss. And back again, Loom Boss is built. So now what we're going to do is glue another upright, another post, and this time we're going to do the one next to it, the, well, the middle one, in actual fact. Now, again, the reason we're not doing the end one first is because even smaller contact points. So we're going to do these ones first, where we've got the doubles. And, yeah, again, take your time, make it as strong as you can, and we're going to put this one on exactly the same way. Eyeball it. And this particular one, as long as it's roughly level with the first one we did, that's fine. The other ones we're going to do after the second one, after the middle one's in place, we're going to have to be a little bit more careful to make sure that they are flat across the bottom. But this one is going to be our second leveler, so it doesn't matter too much, but you do want to get it more or less level with the first one. So again, double glue on the... Uh, Cross rail joins. I managed to get some glue on my brush. Don't skimp on your glue, because it'll only make the thing stronger. Makes it a little bit longer to dry, but it does make it stronger. Put it carefully in place, press it on, and again, just eyeball it so this one's a little bit too high. Slide it down a smidge, press it in place. And make sure you get them on the correct side as well. You could go alternate sides if you wanted to, but to me, I've seen a fair few fences in my time. My day job is going around farms. Um, so, yeah, they tend to be all the posts on the same side. So, yeah, we stick them on there and put it to dry again. Okay, I've just come to do this one. And you can see just how twisted this is. This bottom rail here is twisted um, because... I didn't follow my own advice and pick the squarest cross rail. But to give you some idea of how strong that glue is on that joint when I first put them together, you can now just simply twist it. Ooh, and it's torn a little bit, but that's absolutely fine because we put a little bit of glue in there and then we can put the upright on. And that will then set it in place flat. I hope you could see all that. I was more looking at that than I was looking through the, uh, the the film screen. But yeah, so don't worry if you did get some wonky ones, you can flatten them out at this stage. Right, now we've got two uprights stuck to the cross members. It's sewing time. And what I've done is I've cut about 18 inches of cotton and I threaded both ends through the needle so that it makes a loop at the other end. Can you see that? See the loop? Right. Now we get one of our fences and take the, like I say, the needle is option, optional and I'm going to struggle here to get it on camera so bear with me, I'll do my best. But we want to put, and there's an ice cream van going by in the background. I'm not going to stop for an ice cream. Right, so we want to try and get the loop towards the bottom there and then wrapping over where this join is can't show you the camera I'm used to operating from the other side um, wrapping over where the join is pass the needle through and draw it closed across the join can you see that so it's wrapping around both of these and diagonally across the back 
And then, once that's in place, you simply, he says, again, trying to keep it in camera, in shot, wrap the cotton around that same join. And you don't need the needle for this, you, but like I said, it just gives you that little bit of extra control. So just carefully wrap it round several times. And there we are. So that again will just help make things stronger. And it looks like the gate has been made by tying it together. Okay, now then go to the back of the fence. And by the back, I mean the side where the fence post is actually attached. And then I'm going to pass the needle through where we've just wrapped the cotton around it. And the reason for that is the thread can then sit against the fence post so that it's not as obvious. And then all we simply need to do is wrap it around that joint in exactly the same way. Okay, so wrapping it around the upright and I turn it around where the cross members crossed over. So wrapping it around just a few times don't need to go nuts pull it tight and then again go to the back just pass the needle under where you've made the we'll call them stitches and just do that three times and that effectively ties it off and you can pass your needle through the same loop if you really want to tie a knot in it. I've made a bit of a mess of that because I wasn't watching what I was doing. I was watching through the camera viewer to make sure I was on view. Uh, but yeah, let's try and get this untangled. There we go. Right, but that's all we're trying to do is wrap that cotton around the join between these three matchsticks and those three matchsticks to tie them together. Now you could go as a cross section, and I did that on some of the original ones. Uh, yeah, and this one. So, yeah, I don't know how clearly you can see. Let's hold it that way around. Yeah, these ones had cross. Let's get in front of the camera. So I'm used to being on the other side of the camera. Um, so, yeah, these ones have got like a cross shape on it. But you don't need that, you literally just need across in a diagonal tied off and then now if you really want to do you could work the thread across the top but I'm going to cut it there get another piece of thread and then go around these ones again now again it's easier if you do this one and then that one and then if you do we're then going to stick more uprights on we'll stick this upright on next and then this upright and I'll come back and show you that but if you were to do that one and not do the middle one and do this one next when you come to do the middle one you're then trying to get the thread in between the um, the what effectively is a hole whereas as we're doing it now you're just wrapping it around a nice open gap is the way we'll be doing it so rather than trying to stitch it through what would effectively be if I get a post you won't be able to wrap it as easily so you'd have to be literally stitching it and it takes a bit longer. I discovered that the hard way. So do these two posts first and then wrap it around on both of these. Then stick your next uprights on. And again, we'll do the other one across the joints and the one at this end. Right. I'll come back to you when I've done all that. After I've watched some more. I don't know. What am I on at the minute? I'm currently watching a bolt action battle report with Tabletop CP. Got that on in the background while I'm doing this. Catch you later. Okay, they're all tied together now, and what I should have said was, if you try and tie them together before the glue that holds the uprights to those cross pieces is properly dry, you'll be cursing yourself because it'll slide around all over the place, so that needs to be thoroughly dry before you try and tie them together. Um, so yeah, both of the uprights are tied to the cross sections, and now I'm going to glue on this upright. So the other one that overlaps the two overlaps on the cross sections. So again, blobs of glue. 
and we want to try and make sure that this one is level with the other two at the bottom so get your fence post place it on just loosely for now stand it on a flat surface and then manipulate it until all three sit at the same level hold it in place for a few seconds give the glue a chance to bond if I let go, no it's still not stuck but yeah you want to make sure the bottom of that post is level with the bottom of that post and the bottom of that post and we're going to do the same when we do the other post as well so wait until this glue is dry then we can stick the other one on. If you want you can wait until this glue is dry then tie it on. That tying it on is optional but it does make it a heck of a lot stronger um, so I do recommend you do it. It can be a bit frustrating because um, yeah, the number of times the cotton slips out of the eye of the needle can get a bit annoying and you might get birds nests as you try and tie it together and you get knots and stuff but once you get the hang of it, once you've done two or three, you very quickly get the hang of it and it does make it so much stronger. Right, so that glue has almost set well, almost taken hold and you want to make sure that all three are flat can you see that? all three are on the same level and then we'll place that to one side, let it dry and do the rest right, so we've now got three posts glued on and tied on now I'll just do the two on the end and it's basically the same process as before So. Put some glue towards the end of the uprights get your fence post stand your thus far completed fence on the table line it up so that it's level with the bottom of the fence probably should have zoomed in a bit more but you got the general gist so that you know that the bottom of that post is level with the others. Now, something I've only just discovered is I forgot to add these crocodile clips. So that holds it in place nice and tight while it dries. But obviously I've only got two, so I can only do one fence at a time. But I'll do the other end of this one. blue one off camera. Stand this down, put the fence post on level with the others at the bottom, hold it in place for the glue to start to bite, put a little crocodile clip on. Right, I'm going to let that dry, tie it off and then we'll be at a stage when uh, we can stick it onto your tongue depressor. Here we go then, that's the last of the fence posts stuck on and tied on. And now, moment of truth, time to stick it onto your tongue depressor. So again, good quality wood glue. You want to dab on each the end of each upright, at the end of each post. So this has got clogged. Even though not, it says it's what was it? Anti-clog applicator. It gets clogged. Right, make sure you get it the right way around. Blob of glue on the end of each post. And then just simply stick it onto your tongue depressor. Hold it in place until the glue starts to bond. Hum some lift music to yourselves or something. There we go. Now, set that aside to dry, and then I'll show you what you need your cheap and nasty super glue for. Right, we're all dry. And now, what we do is get some of your aquarium gravel or any stones that you might have from your basin collection. And what I'm going to do is get some super glue and put it at the base of each peg. Of each post. Now that serves two purposes. Now this wood glue claims to be 
water resistant but it's still PVA based and it's resistant not proof so by putting a coat of super glue over it you're going to make that joint stronger for when you come to flock it it's not going to come loose when you start putting PVA on there to uh, apply your flock plus you then get a stone when your little stones your little rocks and put it at the base of the post and again more strength so it's super glued in place to add a bit more strength to your uprights put one at the bottom of each one and initially it looks a bit naff looks a bit too uniform but by the time you finish flocking it you'll be fine he'll look absolutely fine so yeah we're waterproofing those PVA joints and adding more strength to the join by sticking a, a stone next to it because the, the glue will stick to both the, the upright the uh, tongue depressor and the pebble that you just put in place yeah be a bit more selective than I'm being with your pebbles because you want them to make that join between the two right and then all you do is flock it to your preference so I've just done your typical PVA sand paint and glue over the top painted on me rocks, uh, scattered on a few extra rocks and stones as well just so the ones at the bottom of the post don't look too out of place grass flock over the top and in terms of painting the fence all I did was apply a homemade wash of dark brown paint so you can either get some ordinary craft paint, thin it down, you can make your own washers there's plenty of tutorials on YouTube on how to make your own washers if you want to go the whole hog you could use something like Agrax Earthshade or an army painter wash but that's basically it, that's how I made my fences. So it's not a quick project, it is quite fiddly, but it's quite rewarding. I'm really pleased with the way they've turned out, knowing that I've made them myself, it's not something I've been and bought. So yeah, that's how I make my fences. And uh, hopefully you get to see them in a battle bat rep soon. But in the meantime, thank you for watching, please continue to like, comment and subscribe, and God bless.